I don't think they have changed business approach. Business approach for marketing has always been about a understanding your customer and your target audience, right? Figuring out how does your product really fit into their overall life and in scheme of things that they are. And then coming up with communication and messages that really move from awareness to consideration and then finally on to purchase. Right? So that and that entire funnel of activities that marketers do hasn't changed. But having said that, millennials is a different breed of people as compared to the ones before that. But that is evident through all kinds of changes. The breed before the millennials were also different from the breed before them. Right? And uh, what is notable or what is different about this generation obviously is the sheer amount of information that everybody has access to today thanks to technology. So I would possibly put uh, you know, spirit around saying that millennials, not really millennials, but technology has changed the way customers and consumers behave, not just millennials, but even the generations before them now are behaving differently. And that has basically made marketers also change their overall strategies and the way they approach marketing. So I think to connect with the millennial generation, you have enough and more number of tools in the market that tell you saying where are they spending time, what are they doing, which platforms are they on, which, what are they completely into, etc. So that you know continues to be the guiding force. So obviously the millennials as a percentage of time spend much more on digital media as compared to the offline or traditional media. And that's why that is a definite place to catch them. Uh, that is where, where they are surfing online and predominantly I think social media dominates uh, in their overall circle of things that they do on the internet. Apart from that, I think millennials are also highly social people, uh, at least a part of them and therefore, you know, part, parts of the city or parts of the city where you have aggregation points uh, are again great places to actually go and catch the millennials who have a certain standard in terms of how they want to lead lives. So I would go by all those statistics that anyways come to you as uh, well documented and research reports to really go and catch them. I think the first big technology that changed was internet, right? Internet and availability on internet even on the desktop or the larger screens uh, had already started transforming the way people were uh, consuming information as well as had access to information for the very first time in their lives. Um, post that, I think the mobile phone and particularly the smartphones, which you know shrunk the size of your laptops into one single uh, small device, coupled with data access, was the second big leap in terms of technology that contributed in massive change in behavior. And then of course, two platforms that have been at the forefront of leading the change have been one, Google, because of the access that it provides to people of information of all kinds and Facebook, which completely revolutionized the way socializing and uh, making friends and uh, sharing information was uh, happening. So yeah, so in that order, those are the four that come to mind. Customer experience has always been a differentiator because without the right customer experience, neither will you have loyalty nor will you have advocacy. Right? So to drive both, customer experience is extremely important and uh, a brand that falters on that obviously doesn't get either of them. Right? So it, it's, it's the most important whether you're a product and oh, in, in, in the case of a product, there are a lot of steps that you, know, you can easily cover up uh, as, as a product company, but when it comes to services especially, I think customer experience becomes even more crucial and critical given the fact that uh, a customer suddenly is having multiple touch points. It's not just going to the shop and picking some product off the shelf, it's actually experiencing the shop online or offline, waiting for the service to happen, finally having the service delivered, experiencing that and then, so there are multiple more steps as compared to a product on a service and therefore customer experience becomes even more uh, challenging as well as important part to really take care of in the business. I think the word is expectation. So uh, to bridge the gap between expectation and experience, you have to set the expectations right. right? To over promise and under deliver is the worst possible fallacy that any company or uh, marketing op can get into. And the other one is way more preferable. So expectation setting and uh, putting across the right set of expectation and calling a spade a spade rather than calling it a diamond 
is something that all marketeers have to be very very clear about it is an age where information flows fast it is an age where reviews and ratings are there for everybody you can um, literally uh, find out about anything and everything that you want to know from the gali ka nukad chai wala to you know the marks and spencers and armanis of the world online and therefore it is important that you set the expectation right don't over promise and i think that will itself take you clear in terms of the customer experience i would say first and foremost the brand um which represents either a product or the service that it has the quality of that is the first and the foremost thing that will enable it to remain competitive second being paranoid about your business and your line of business and therefore always keeping an eye out for the changes that are happening for the new competition that you are going to get what they are doing how customers are uh, you know reacting to your product or service how they are uh, talking about you what are the kind of changes that are happening in their lives how are their behaviors changing and are you adapting fast enough to them is somebody else running away with it has somebody got a better narrative than you right all of these things basically form part of paranoia right so brands need to be paranoid and therefore always always one be on top uh, you know be grounded and have their uh, customer pulse firmly uh, you know in their grasp uh, and uh, finally i would say that uh, uh, while it is something which is uh, a little more bigger in the overall scheme of things brands can be competitive if there is a right organizational culture right because it all starts with the organization with the way it is being led and the leadership over there that will drive uh, the right set of behaviors that sustain good brands a good brand understands its customer well a good brand has a good marketing team that is able to connect the pieces of customer behavior and their product offering and good brands have very good um ways in which they really put out the creative communications that manage to resonate and find takers in their target audiences those are possibly the three things while by while we generalize as north south east west i think south itself is a diverse set i've always maintained through my career that uh, india is many indias right uh, and uh, one of the things i remember very clearly when i used to handle dove as a brand uh, we used to have a different ad running in the south because it is media isolatable versus a different ad that was running in hsm markets or hindi markets right on those channels um that's because of the fact that customers are different and if 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 i were to you know it it it's wrong to stereotype <laughs> people but uh, yes there are definite differences between people uh, let's say a generic cluster called south and rest of india i would say that the south is a little more formal uh, the southern market is a little more uh, receptive when you have very clear functional messages there is logic uh, the southern market also likes it where you are to the point and where you don't try to beat around the bush and um, i would say that the southern market uh, all four cultures that exist over here have a very strong pride in their overall uh, lineage in the culture and the history of the four states that we have down in the south or now five with telangana but uh, that's something to you know always understand well and play to uh, and we found and and we find numerous instances when you use languages and when you use their language effectively it results in a much more successful campaign as compared to when you don't so um, approaching southern market would mean uh, having a little more of rational messaging uh, approaching the southern market would mean to really in evoke the kind of pride that the people over here have for their history and culture and approaching uh, the southern market would really mean um, uh playing to the audiences with a set of people that they identify with right while uh, you have a lot of big mega stars coming out of bollywood they are not necessarily the right fit for example in a lot of cases when it comes down south so uh, going with more friendly faces more identifiable uh, faces down to the southern market simply because of the fact that it is media isolatable right uh, you wouldn't have that choice if you were going to pick up one particular state from not the northern part of the country but because of the fact that you have that option as a marketer in the south 
you would do that differently. The, the southern customers are sort of early adopters of technology. And that's why if you look at the languages uh, that have really, really taken to the internet and the, oh, and, and the whole uh, digital thing, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam and all were there, uh, possibly uh, in a much bigger way before Hindi even took off, right? So uh, very early adopters of technology, uh, you know, people who uh, are well informed, uh, possibly uh, also because of the fact that you have higher literacy levels over here as well as much more participation of women in workforce, right? Uh, and much more empowerment of women. Um, the, this, this part of the country tends to be, definitely be a little more progressive as compared to the rest. AI, <clears throat> omni-channel, SEO. I, I know SEO is not new, but I think it's going to come in a huge focus. I think uh, MedLife will get on to a very holistic approach to giving healthcare to customers, which is a life beyond medicines, uh, life beyond just doctors and diagnostics, but really touching upon the other aspects like food, uh, exercise, spirituality, and the other things that really go into holistic care and management of one's overall health and well-being. So uh, the platform will become way more focused on creating very engaging experiences with our customers. And I see that to be the big strategic thrust that we will take. Uh, trustworthy. Um, trendsetter. Uh, lovable stroke desirable. One of the most impactful campaigns for me has been Mutual Fund Sahi Hai. Surely because of the fact that uh, it shows in terms of numbers for the first time in India, the number of subscribers of mutual funds has overtaken that of insurance which held the number one position for decades now. So, uh, highly impactful campaign, very, very uh, classily executed in terms of very relatable, lovely stories that uh, played out on the television sets as well as online. Um, I, I hope it's 2018. If it isn't, then possibly the other campaign that comes to mind from 2018 is uh, Swiggy. I think they did a fantastic job in terms of uh, just bringing alive so many nice uh, snippets of life and uh, in a very humorous, uh, light, touching way, uh, bring their services uh, you know, to the fore and uh, build relevance for it.